Well, we'll get going. So welcome everyone to today's webinar on MAPNIC Mastery and FME. So uh, we're looking forward to sharing some, some fun things with you. Stephanie did a little bit of a job on our, um, this is probably not good if we're running for political office to have our heads <laughs> decorated like this. But I'm Dale Lutz and I got the French painter's hat. So I'm Dmitry Bal. I'm Scenario Creation and Testing Analyst at SAFE. And uh, as you will see, uh, I have the best job at, uh, at SAFE. I'm playing with all the cool stuff that our developers make. And uh, we've had the dream of bringing Mapnik and FME together, I think, at least four years. And so it's really exciting to be able to present this and show this to you today. So by way of an agenda, of course, we're going to do uh, this introduction. And then we'll have some questions and answers at the end, as well as uh, we're going to talk about a contest. And we'll have a special surprise for you to do something interactively. So it's got a, we've got a full agenda. Yeah. Full agenda this morning. And at the end, if you have a microphone that works, we'll uh, give you a chance to get your 15 seconds of fame. And um, you'll be able to join in that way as well. OK. So let's keep on going here. So we will talk more about it at the end. But bear in mind that we are going to have a contest involving uh, customers using MapNIC with FME. And we'll uh, talk about it at the end. But right now, we're going out to the polls. And so let me see if I can um, get that going. So we were really interested to know um, what are people doing. There we go. So the poll should be underway. You can uh, pick just one, whether you use FME, or you use MAPNIC, or you use neither, um, or you use them together, or use them both but not at the same time. We've got every possible uh, combination there. So um, we have a small number of map knickers, it looks like. Is that how you'd say it, map knickers? <laughs> it sounds like a, a line of uh, men's underwear, map knickers, for, for geographers. That could be fun. Yeah, it's pretty low who use the combination of both. Yes. Just about 5%. Well, let me close the poll. I'll give you one more chance to hit uh, submit. That's a pretty good turnout. We'll close the poll. We'll share those results. So. Uh, you can see that uh, lots of you are FME users, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, the next largest group is the folks who don't use either. So thanks so much for spending some time with us today. If nothing else, I think you'll find this an educational um, exercise, just kind of understanding what can be done. Only 1% of you are map knickers that uh, don't use FME at all. But there's some of you that uh, use it uh, separately. So the 7% of you, I think, are going to see some interesting things today. And 5% already using this. So that's really good news. Yeah, well, we really hope to see this number uh, growing after today's webinar. Yes. So let's uh, get back to the slides here. There's a couple words about SAFE. Here's our uh, nicely groomed group. Um, about 100 of us approximately working hard to solve data moving problems. That's all we want to do is help you move your data from where it is to where you need it to be with the least amount of time and pain. Our goal is to make you have to use our product very little because we can squeeze the time down for preparing data to nearly nothing. We've got a few uh, of these good looking safers tuned in today to answer your questions. So don't be afraid to keep them busy and um, be typing questions as we go. And they'll be getting back to you. I do want to shout out to Stuart, who did help us quite a bit um, late last night, preparing our special surprise at the end. So thank you, Stuart, uh, so much for that. And uh, hopefully FME Cloud is ready for all the demand that will be put on it uh, shortly. So, um, And I know Iris was chatting with us earlier, too. So do ask lots of questions. If you're new to FME, and it looks like our iconic lizard um, is ready to start painting on the screen. But if you're new, you can join us uh, weekly. Our friend Craig Vernon uh, and Mark host a webinar tomorrow morning, I think. And so um, I wonder if they have more people in their studio audience than we do. Do you think anybody can? I have no idea. I well, definitely. Yeah. yeah, if it's Craig's there, usually that's a big draw. But anyway, you can find out more. We're not really going to be doing intro to FME in this uh, webinar. Uh, but um, if you really want to find out more, this is a great place. So again, we are in the business of connecting data from wherever it is to where it should be, transforming it along the way, and then lastly, setting it up so that you can automate that data flow. And that's a big part. When you think about MapNIC, we're connecting data from a number of different places into it. Then we transform it by rearranging, filtering, doing some of those generalization techniques, displacing. You'll see a lot of that. And then the thing is, once you got that figured out, you can set it up to run every night or 
and whenever there's a change or whenever someone you request things, that's what you can do. And, and to do that, we have our products on the desktop, which is what we'll be showing today. You can take the rules and configurations you did, you made there, push them up to a server where they can run hands-free, and then lastly, that server could be running in a hosted cloud where we charge you by the hour, whereas this server, we charge you for a license you run on your site. And actually, our last demo is in FME Cloud, isn't it? Yes. Do you like playing in FME Cloud, Dimitri? Well, I'm, well, that's what I really enjoy, and all what I do, again, games yeah. and toys. <laughs> yes, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, it's makes it very easy to take these automations uh, and have them run hands-free. So it's time for us to do our first demo. We're going to jump right in and um, try something. And so uh, this is kind of interesting because Dimitri and I both have, let's see, let's see, come on. We're going to have to go like this and then like this. And this should be uh, Windows 8 FME. And so here we go, Dimitri. Okay. And I will, bring, I will put the data out there, and then you're going to run this. Uh, we haven't rehearsed this tradition. We both have a mouse here, so we could have uh, interesting behavior. So, Dimitri, we're going to do something where we're starting with what kind of data? Yeah, we have a special light database. Uh, this one, yes, with just a single feature. Well, you know what? I'm going to put it out. I just added it to Workbench by saying Workbench is our product, uh, or one of the pieces of it, and I can pop that down there. Now we've got one table, and I'll say Inspect, which will bring it up in here. And there it is. So this is this is the data. If I click it, we can see down here what the attributes are. And uh, there we go. And that that's what you think is right. Yes, this is our beautiful province where we live, British Columbia. And now I'll hand it over to Dimitri, who's going to uh, show us how to use Mapnik. What do you? What's your plan here? Well, uh, I start with something really simple. I will add Mapnik rasterizer to the canvas. So he types. You can search for those things in the left-hand gallery, but um, once you're proficient, you just type it. You drag it over, and what, you're going to connect stuff? Yes, I'm going to connect it. Oh, it made an input there? Yes, so it's a dynamic input port. A few transformers got this. Uh, well, yes. This, this, this release. release. Yeah. Now this red button means we have to do something. We have to configure this guy to do yes. something. Yes. Um, All right. This is probably the biggest uh, settings dialog Ever. Yes. Well, maybe I will rename this rule to BC, British Columbia, so that we know. You're going to define is. rules for ah, yes. I will yeah. define rules how to show this yes. province uh, how to rasterize it. So I think I will show a line surrounding the, the province, the boundary, and maybe I can set it, its color to say hmm, red. Okay. And I can set its width, say three pixels. Okay. And maybe uh, I can add another rule. Um, press duplicate button and say, I need a polygon. So you can do the polygon first, because I'm sure the order Yes, the order yes that's the order, yes. OK. And what, what would be the good color? Maybe green. We're a green province. And now we have to define the the uh, dimensions of the image of the image the output image. Um, the easiest way is to do it by defining spacing. So the, the pixel size, I will say one thousand meters. Okay. Is a good one. And you're going to make an RGB. Uh, it's it's uh, in this case it doesn't. Now what about these other things? Background and ground extents. It's all okay. Uh, yes. Uh, now right now we set really minimal things. Uh, so. Uh, because I renamed the port, yes. so we lose the connection. So I will reconnect it. And now I will connect inspector. This is the transformer that sends the output into our visualization application. So this is how we did it. So uh, I should maybe uh, show that here on the outside, we have just a single input port, whereas inside, we have two rules. Right, you're, the drawing, same it name. Yes. you're yeah. drawing it twice. So and now I run this. So this is how we're just testing if things are working. Oh. So and here is our up output. So this is the raster. We can check its si its uh, size. Sizes. Okay. It's, yeah. In pixels. So uh, that's. And part of FME is this data inspector tool that lets us see what's going on with our translations. Yes. But I can can you spiff that up a little bit? That's a fairly boring rendering so far. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, change it a little bit. Uh, we can uh, keep adding the input rules. So maybe uh, let's replace the, the the background, not not the background, but the coloring of the oh. of this shape with some pattern. Oh, oh. now he's going to find the file. So this one, 
It must be yes. You like that one? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so we we picked some some rust or oh, and you could even make it for transparent. The There's an opacity there. If you felt like it, you could make yes, it see Yeah, through. yeah. But uh, you're gonna slap it on top. Uh, well, it will go underneath everything else. Okay. Yes. So on top of that, we have our line. Maybe I can change it. Maybe let me make it uh, uh, cyan, okay. and I will make it much wider, say 15. Okay. And I also. Would like to oh. offset it a little bit, say by fifteen, maybe fourteen okay. pixels from the the uh, Otherwise, it would go right in the middle of the original line of the vector line. So this is so, like it's in a way buffering it to make it a little bigger. Yes, it's making it a little bigger. If I use the negative number, yes. then I will go inside. Got it. Okay, so maybe to show you how line patterns work, I can have a line pattern on top of that. Uh, I will choose some other texture. And this I should move up so that our lines are on top of the polygon. Right, because we're going to be drawing from the top down. So really that top one that's filling it with green is not really doing anything much anymore. Yeah, we can remove it. Yeah. But we'll leave it for sure. Uh, so, and maybe let's add a label. OK. We only have one province here, but oh, we're going to, OK, so it knows the attributes. Yeah, so we will say that take the name. So now we can pick uh, our font. So times, is it a good one? Yes. Yeah. So something okay. like this. Now here, uh, we can s specify some halo around the characters yes. so that, well, they stand out, stand out well, okay. better. Okay. And maybe let's change the color for the font. Like these. Okay. Crimson. And the text font size, is that in? Um, uh, let's set it to 100. That's meters, or what is it in? Ground units? Uh, that's pixels. Pixels. Oh, pixels. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah. Mapnik that makes in pixels. Mapnik is in pixels. That's good to know. Yes. Uh, and I will change one more thing. Here I will put 100. British Columbia consists of two words. And this basically tells as soon as the uh, text exceeds this number, Move the second word to the next line. Got it. So for any given piece of text, it'll look at this and go, yeah. Lots of lots of uh, yes, lots here. and lots of settings for this. This is all to do with this labeling business. Yes. Yeah. So this is why well we'll show that later. Uh, Mapnik has really good labeling abilities. Yeah. Burning them into rasters. Okay. So I think this is everything. Well, it looks kind of like the one I saw last night. So. Okay. Are you so, ready to try it? Yeah, let's do it. Should we save it to a, some format? That's that's always yeah. ambitious. Maybe we should. Yeah, because that's well the end goal. Yeah. To make some raster. Okay. Uh, Go ahead and hit that. That should work. Uh, yeah, okay. we will select this folder. We will write directly okay. to yeah. demo one. And uh, okay. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And now the name of the raster is going to go in here. Uh, we will say BC. All right. And that's the FME, you can send the same data two places. All right. So that's a simple example of reading one spatial light um, file. And um, yo, you're even going to be so bold as to uh, not, not check it out. OK, here he goes. He hits F5 to run. And we're going to apply all those rules. And then you can right click on BC and say open containing folder. With any luck. And uh, that was just done now. Yeah. Yes. So if you yeah. double click that, does it open? There we go. Wow. That's kind of uh, nice and west coasty. Yes, it's right here. It's a beautiful place. Oh, Vancouver oh Island. You, did you take this picture? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So that you don't have any copyright problems. Yes. <laughs> so now, if I'm looking at this, I do see. Oh, the the blue around the province was your pattern from that. Um, uh, yes, that this pattern. is a rope uh, yes. pattern, and then that with uh, wide lines Which surrounding. You yes, yes, yes. Which do do, do the offset. Got it. So there, there, folks, is um, you know how Dimitri just sat down and authored some rules in effect uh, with this Mapnik and um, was able to uh, produce an interesting result very quickly. I want to just show one last thing, Dimitri. Let's hop back to the workspace. If you go into the Mapnik rasterizer, one of the things we can do is when you pick, um, let's say, the text, for example. Um, yeah, let's go into this one. Can you pull this down? Do we have the full? Yes. 
No, we don't have it there. But some of these, like for example, on that one, the text font size, we could have done uh, calculations on the fly. Yes. And we won't do that right here, but you can bring up an editor to do math, and that is a very powerful way that you can supply these MapNIC parameters as a function of the data that's going in. And that's one unique thing. Yeah, for example, your text size can be a function of an area. Right. So the bigger the area, the bigger the text uh, size. And so this is where the combination of FME and MapNIC starts to become very powerful. And we'll be showing some other examples of this later yeah. as we move through our examples. So with that, should I hop back to the, yes. uh, to the presentation? There, Dmitry was happy. He didn't have to use a Macintosh um, a mouse. So that was a, a nice bonus for him. OK, so where, where am I? OK, there I am. OK, here we go. I'll get rid of this. All right. So yeah, we had the ability to make nice rasters before, but there we go. But we always used to have to use a lot of transformers. And so this is the kind of thing that you had done actually in the past. Yes, uh, this is uh, an example of making a street map of Vancouver. Yes. It's about 50 transformers. Uh, I had to make lots of buffers, uh, setting colors, uh, stroking text, yes. uh, dissolving features uh, to get something like this. Yes. And so that was all done using the primitives that are in FME today. But as uh, Dimitri has said, with the MapNIC rasterizer, it's really a game-changing bit of functionality because here's the same kind of thing. Yes, yes. So as, as same, you can see, it's just five, yes, five transformers. Yes. And so uh, you know, it's easier to understand what's going on. And actually, part of the transformation is that you're splitting out the, the data that was in one file to begin with. As public streets, you're filtering it based on the kind of street so that you can render them differently. Yep. And that's... Uh, the big thing about this. Yeah, very, very simple to understand. Even Don, Don would be pleased because it's less than 10 <laughs> transformers. Yes. And that makes this map here, which arguably is a little bit fancier, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So just a few words of step way back to the 70% of you that are FMEers that may not have been familiar with MapNIC prior. MapNIC is an open source cartographic rasterizer. And we can click on this with luck. and. Um, You'll see here that you can go and visit their web page, and it's a great community that's involved there. Um, I know I was in touch with Dane last night, who is um, ha happy that we're working with them. We've already reported a bug or two, and they've they fixed them immediately. Oh um, yeah, one bug was fixed in 40 minutes after yes. we reported it. Yeah, so thanks very much, MapNet community, and we look forward to working with you and continuing to support you as we uh, work uh, in the future. So uh, within MapNIC, uh, you have a number of ways that you can render data. This is just part of MapNIC. So, Dimitri, do you want to just talk through these? Well, these are symbolized symbolizers that we already showed you. Here you uh, can pick how you would like to show, to, to present your feature, and then just set different styles. And as you could already see, we send just a single polygon, but we can style it as a polygon, or as a line, or as a text, or maybe as a symbol. That's all possible. Even as a building. Even, yeah, as, even as a building, yes. Yes. So it gives you a sense. This is kind of the vocabulary that you have to work with. Now, with each one of these symbolizers, as you saw in the demonstration, there's a lot of parameters that you get to set. And as I hinted at, those parameters can be hard-coded by you, set once, or they can be computed or calculated on the fly from the, various, from the data that's coming in. And so these, this combination is very, very powerful. So, oh, this raster one lets you take an image, actually, yeah. and just slap it down there. And you can even do raster math and blending and things with rasters. That's very interesting functionality. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and the shield is just basically uh, for, for roads, right? Like uh, shields are uh, points uh, or symbols with text. Symbols with text. So um, not this kind of a guy here. <laughs> this looks like a Minecraft guy. <laughs> All right, we're not talking about Minecraft today, though, are we? No. OK, good. Uh, there is a labeling engine in there. Um, now, this labeling engine is only for making rasters. If you want cartographic labeling to go to other data formats, that's where this map text labeler that Dimitri mentioned at the beginning of our broadcast would fit in. But if you're just burning a raster, it, this thing can do a fabulous job, as this little screenshot shows. And actually, coincidentally, we're going to hold our FME user conference right here near Canada Place. Um, 
in only a, what, about another month. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't registered, please do. It's going to be a great, great time. Uh, amazing stories, amazing learning. Uh, we've got a lot of great speakers coming up to that. We, yeah, we will be glad to see you all there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, and then not only that, uh, when you are doing these operations in MapNIC, you also can control how the different layers interact. And can you explain a little bit of the idea? Uh, yeah, well, there are two uh, types of uh, compositing operations, those that mask uh, each other in different ways, like logical operations uh, or uh, blending operations. Yes. They say how the layers should mix uh, with each other. If you know uh, or use uh, products, uh, graphic editors such, uh, such as Photoshop or uh, GIMP, you would uh, know these uh, operations. Uh, if not, then it's a really great uh, tool to play with. Yes. Here I use a, I send a single line to to Mapnik rasterizer. Uh, I think about ten times, changing only width. And I use uh, the operation called plus. So uh, the pixel values are always added. So yes. and we get higher and higher values towards the center of the line. So I start to uh, so the, the the color for for all of them is the same. It's really really dark blue. Ah. So and that's the, the end after you so that's, sum up all the all the so lines. so it was just one line going in and then ten rules inside of there. Is that how? Uh, or was there ten, 10 copies of the same line? Ten copies of the same line. Ah, okay. Yes. Oh, well, like a different, different, different fit. Yes. So yeah. you're, you're dynamically changing their width. Yes. There's only one rule with a dynamic width. Yeah. I see. Yes, yes. So that lets you, again, the combination of FME where it's easy to duplicate things and MapNIC where we can dynamically change the, the functionality gives you effects like this. All right. Yes, and this also, this must be in a map how this has worked to do the subway lines or the, the rapid transit of Vancouver through this compositing. Yeah. MapNIC also works at the sub-pixel level of anti-aliasing to give us very nice visual crispness. And this means that we are not limited to in integer values for uh, sizes in yes. pixels. And we will show how this works. Oh, okay. I did not know that. So MapNIC rasterizer, all those properties we just said are part of the open source MapNIC, which of course you're free to use, and there's a thing called Tile Mill that is on top of MapNIC that is also very popular, works very, very well, and the Mapbox folks have put a lot of effort in there. When we bring that functionality into FME, it expresses itself through the rasterizer transformer we showed already, which is this transformer that takes all these kinds of data features that can be floating through FME and then applies the rules you author and turns them into an image. So some of the advantages are that you don't have to do any coding, so you don't have any of these kinds of things um, to, to learn if you don't know them already, which makes people like Dimitri and I happy, because we don't have to. I know Don would like to learn XML to program MapNIC, but, uh, <laughs> but he doesn't have to anymore. Um, we already showed you the, the fact that you can have multiple rules going per feature. And then, of course, with FME, you can send the same feature in multiple times with different properties if you feel like that outside of the MapNIC uh, rasterizer itself. And so this Vancouver Streets example uh, takes us uh, to a level that we think is a very good pattern. And that is where we take the style definitions and put them out into a spreadsheet. So here's the spreadsheet that you must have made, Dimitri. Yeah. And so this is the different uh, feature types or table names coming in, and then these are a bunch of properties that you're going to pump into the MapNIC rasterizer. Is that yes. what's going on? Yeah, and we read them within the workspace. Yes, so the styles are external, and we can do them like that, and then we're also going to show this labeling engine in some more detail in this example. So I think with that, um, oh yeah, there's compound line styles also going on. That you have yeah, with. well, uh, in this example, I show pretty simple examples of making compound line styles, but uh, this illustration, and maybe if you click once, one, one more time, show you how you can, by uh, creating two, three, four rules for, for a line, make all kinds of uh, line styles. Yes. So these are not patterns, that these are not rasters uh, originally, oh. so they're just lines sent to MapNIC and rasterized in, in different ways, ways. Yes. but laying on top of each other. You, yeah. You'll show us how this works in a minute. Yes. So uh, let's go out to that demo. If I can have any luck, let's see. 
All right, so I'm going to open this up. So we need to do, um, let's open, it's called Vancouver Streets XLS. So do I want to save these changes? No. no. And here it is. So hopefully the folks at home can see this. Uh, do you want to talk us through any of this, Dimitri? Yes. Uh, okay, you can drive. So uh, we read some uh, layers uh, of Vancouver. Public and data? Yes. Uh, here you can see that. Well, w where you can, maybe I can click on this. Yeah, there it comes. Yeah, so lots of layers, all free in different formats. You can download them and play with it. For us, it's a great source of data, of different kind, kinds of uh, data that, that we can play with and make our demos. Yes. So in this case, we read the shoreline, the park polygons, and streets. Uh, so uh, everything is happening here. The streets have only their name and use attributes, but then we join our our XLS file, our spreadsheet. So here we say that we need Excel file, this one, and join the use attribute. So in this case for Vancouver Streets, it's residential, arterial, or collector routes uh, with a feature column in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Uh, can I switch to the switch? You want to go to the Excel? Yeah. Let's, let's do, let me do that for you. And we'll hop, whoops, come on, computer. Where was Excel? We didn't actually start Excel, Dimitri. So um, let me start up Excel. Here we go. And um, with luck, we can look at yesterday. And we had this Vancouver Streets symbology. OK, there's yeah. Excel. Yeah, so uh, we have this column called Feature. And these values, so yes. th th that's what we use for joining uh, to the features yes. uh, in, uh, in our shape files. And here are the symbology. Yeah, so we should hop back there? Yeah. OK, here you go. And so when you join that, so, so yeah. yeah, when I join that, so if you, you open can, up, hit the, yeah, there we go. So all those things are now part of that feature. Yeah, so all those attributes from uh, Excel are now the part of this, of each feature. Now, why are you sorting there? Well, I sort them so, so that my arterial routes are on top of the residential and collector routes. Yes. So okay. that's why I, I will show on the output why we need this. OK. And then here, uh, I make the uh, comp uh, compound line styles with uh, making street outlines and fills. So the outline is the wider part, and the fill is the uh, inner part. So yeah, if you and then the um, so can you show us uh, on some of them where the where those feet where the properties are that are from the um, you know there's the line parameters. So it's just thinking about that right now. Whoa, we're a little bit slow. Uh oh, don't panic. <laughs> That's bad news. I don't know what happened to my. Uh, it's, it's our first time trying Windows 8.1, so maybe uh, that's the problem. Let me close this guy. I don't think that's the problem. I, I, I know why. It, it is fixed by now, but it's 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 a GUI issue, not not. Oh, problem. it's a GUI issue. Will, it's it, a GUI will, issue. It, will it be healthy? Uh, it, 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 it is fixed now, but not in this. Not apparently in the new okay. version. Yeah. It's a bit slow. It, it's a bit it's a bit slow for a certain combination of uh, rules. Yes. Okay. If you close it and. If I, Close it, then I can. Uh, uh oh, could you run it again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, folks. But um, so let's just get Workbench going again. If you try the latest, I guess the beta is it's is fixed in SP two thousand fifteen for sure. Okay. So anyway, we'll go back in here. Whoops. Do we want to recover? Okay, yeah, yeah. Sure. All right. So we're back where we were. So, if I simply resize it, it should help. Really? Okay. Yeah. I hope so. No, you see, it's, it won't. Yeah, we yeah. can't win. All right, but anyway, is there anything else you wanted to show in there? Well, actually, I wanted to show something. But... I think I know why too, because I've got the I've added uh, larger fonts for everybody, and that's probably what's what's um, messing it up in this in this one as well. I think it's it's uh, it's stuck in my computer. Yeah. Um, if I would able to add just a single one more rule, then it would work. 
Really? Yeah. <laughs> You see, it just calculates the size and jumps between the scroll bars, no scroll bars. I is, see. That's yeah. what its problem is. Yes. So if, by adding a rule, are we going to be healthy now? I hope so. So, but what I wanted to show here that we take the color from the attribute. Yes. Oh, yes. And yes. the width we take from from the attribute. So yeah, that's what this pull down here, right? Yes. If you do that, and then bang. So that's that's dynamically. That's how we're bringing the Excel spreadsheet into the world of the um, MapNet rasterizer. Yeah. So now we probably can run it. Well, why don't we, we route it to an inspector instead? Yes. So we can see. Oh, it, it is routine. Okay. Yeah. OK. So instead of going to the image file, it's going to go to our data inspector. All right. So now it's doing its thing. And this is exciting watching the log file go by, isn't it, Dimitri? Yeah, well, it's, it's uh, great thing to see what is going on. <laughs> if you see something red, then something is not quite right. Yes. So uh, I can hear the fan blowing. Probably the people at home can, too. Uh, how big of an image? Well, this, OK, there it is. It's a pretty big image, actually. Yeah, we can, we can check. It's 14, almost 15,000 pixels by almost 11,000 pixels. OK, and if you would start zooming uh, in. There. Yeah, maybe in this area. Uh, still kind of. Still, do we have somehow? Can we somehow cancel selection? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe in this area. Okay, that looks good. Yeah. So this has been labeled all over. Look at those curves. Can you go back where you just were there? All those curvy roads looking nice. Yes. Angus Drive, named after the guy. Look at Angus Drive. <laughs> who Angus is the guy that does the data inspector. Yes. So Angus, thanks so much for uh, having a road named after you. So, and now why I needed sorting. The streets are, are not sorted in the shape file. So, and I would just see sometimes, occasionally, the residential road could go over the, ah. yes, the, the, the arterial road. So you need the, the ones to, yeah. that come on the bottom get red. Residential should be on the bottom, then should be collectors, because they intersect. So you send in those residential ones first. Yes. Because Mapnik must draw them in the order they arrive. Yes, yes. Then I send collector routes, and then I send the arterial routes. Got it. And that so. makes the correct look. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, but uh, if you don't like the colors. Yeah, OK. I, I actually don't really like the colors, Dimitri. Yeah, me neither. So we go back to our spreadsheet. Well, here I'll you, Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, say, what would you like to see? Maybe fill colors should be. More orange. OK. Now, the, these colors are in RGB between 0 and 1. You can use the color pickers in FME to help you pick these numbers. But Dimitri's going to just uh, pick them in. Something like this. We can also change well everything. Yes. Uh, label sizes, uh, how wide the roads are. Oh, I, I think we should make them a little wider. Can you? Uh, OK. So that will be that the darker outline. Yes. OK. Yeah, the outline width. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't have to change anything. We just Save show you it, the idea. And with luck, he goes and runs this again. And this is going to be another exciting uh, rendering that we're going to do. Anything else we could point out? Like, there's operations in here, like changing the case uh, yes. so that they weren't all uppercase, I guess. Oh, you're going to title case. Yes, so that uh, the first character is capitalized yes. in, in each word. And then I also wanted to look at the shoreline you joined it. And can you explain what that's well, about? Well, because it consists of two pieces. Uh, okay. I didn't. I could, of course, change it to make just a single feature, but well, that's how we get it from the city yes. of Vancouver. So we're connecting all the pieces. Yeah, to that... make it a polygon. This polygon, the, which is, which is white here. So and the background is uh, blue. Yes. So let's take a look now. Um, if what what did you actually change? What... We changed the uh, the color. Yes. So if you flip back to view three. It should be the old. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now it's different. Yeah. So basically, you don't have to know FME anymore. You've taken the rules, the rendering, and put it into a spreadsheet, which is easier to edit than um, than XML or CSS or even these dialogues in FME. Yeah. Well, you don't have to go to. You you, you see that lots and lots of dialogues. Uh, Yes. Uh, yeah, you can find so them. Put, so. And we, for industrial MapNIC use, we would recommend this approach. Yeah. And we'll be sending this example out afterwards. But basically, put the uh, rendering rules, or not the, really the rules, but the rendering um, 
definitions yep. of style out into a spreadsheet and then join them. It makes it much simpler. Yeah. All right. Should we go back to the? Uh, yeah. Are you done with Vancouver? We're done. All right. So let's get rid of Excel. Let's go back to PowerPoint. See if we can get it to come. All right. So um, there we go. And here's just again what we were looking at uh, being created. All right. Um, we didn't actually talk anything about this, but you've done some work with the three er, with the three D ish side as well. Yeah, so it's a not 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 real three D. Uh, it, it is called building symbolizer, but uh, here I just show that uh, any any polygon can can be symbolized as as a building. So in this case, it's not buildings, polygons, and even texts. Yeah, you, what you're doing in FME, there's a transformer called the text stroker, which turns annotations into polygons and then you're feeding these as if yeah. they're polygons into Mapnik yes. and saying just pretend they're two meters tall buildings. Yes, exactly. And it gives you this effect and I guess you must have had a raster at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So that's what, what's going on here. All right, so now let's look at some of these generalization things um, and somebody had asked in the pre-conference survey or the pre-webinar survey, can we do multiple scales? And so this is a map, where did this data come from, Dimitri? That's uh, our Canadian data and our CAN data. Yes, and so it's for somewhere in British Columbia, and this was rendered with FME, and we'll, we'll give you the workspace and we'll show you it in a minute. It's a more complex workspace to do all this, but um, this is at some scale, and you've got dashed patterns for whatever these things are, must be cut lines or uh, yeah. something, yeah. and um, and the labeling that's small, and, if, and also we should look here, the rivers are um, thicker when they get close well, to Well, we will the, have a separate... Okay, separate yes. Answer. And then the, if we see it again, here it is rendered at a different scale. Did you see the difference, folks? Let's go back. There's one and another. We're at an eye test. Which one can you read better? I can read this one better. But this is meant to be um, when we're zoomed out more, I guess. Yeah. So Lone Prairie Road, clearly shown here. On this one, it's much smaller, Lone Prairie Road. Okay. So um, what are some of the things you wanted to talk to, Dimitri? Well, uh, when... Uh you generalize your map, the features that were well, quite far apart at larger scale can be on top of each other at smaller scales. And that's the area right here, right? Yes, and so with uh, a oh. special transformer called Displacer, we can, we can move a little bit one of the features. That's, that was made for NRCAN for map generalization, so that's yes. a great, you combine it, you get this nice effect. Yeah, Okay. so when they really close, yeah, so that's the parameter that defines it. They can go up. It gives it a little nudge. Yeah. And okay, what's this about? So uh, again, we have two images here, so we can compare one against the other. So here, the rivers get thicker from uh, where they start from the beginning. Yeah, to to where they join other rivers. And so basically, there's a thing so, called a strawler order, which means how many guys have joined into you, basically. Yeah, it's, it's a measure for uh, branching complexity. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, so the, 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 the first, uh, uh, the streams at the beginning have strawler order one, yeah. and then when they join, they get two, three, four, and, and so yes. on. Yes, so the guy at the very end that has had everybody join in might have a bigger number, like four or five. Yeah, so at my university, uh, the ability to show river flowing uh, from thinner to thicker yeah. was uh, the difference between uh, passing and failing marks. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, you passed the, uh, the FME map. Yeah. Forms. And then this last thing is just to say we can take this when we combine the generalization in with the MapNIC ability to render and lastly FME's ability to tile, we now can make what we call smart tiles. Yeah. Okay. So actually, folks, if you want to try it at home right now, if you type in fme.ly slash tiles2 or Bing tiles, and I'll just try this. So let me go out to Chrome here and um, see if I go fme.ly FME slash tiles2. So if we go do that, um, this is uh, a little bit, I, I actually did the JavaScript here, I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> um, so anyway, if we have this tiled once, FME made these tiles, and I um, hit the plus sign, there, you can see that it changed to the um, more detailed set of tiles, right? Yeah. Minus and plus, so that's with FME.ly tiles too. And what was the other one that uh, we had there? Uh, for Bing Maps. Right, it was, um, I think it's this one. 
So this is the, the Bing one, which was uh, Bing, I should look it up. Okay, what was it? Bing tiles, fm.ly slash Bing tiles. And if we have that, you get this. And if you just zoom in once with the plus sign, suddenly we appear on top of there. And if you zoom in again, then you see the other one. And again, no, that's the, uh, the same. So you can use the raster for, for, for example, for two zoom levels. And yes. then you can generalize your map for another two levels and so on. Yes. So maybe zoom in one more time. Yeah. Yes, right. Three, three clicks in changes it. So, and then I think then we pop out because we only have a couple of zoom levels defined here. So it's always a hit and miss with the map, with the Bing to get it. So, Dimitri, do we want to take a quick peek at how you do this or what? Would yes, the, I think we should uh, show this workspace. It's a little more complicated, but um, it starts to show, um, I think you call it main demo? Yeah. No, we won't save that. All right. So I'll let you drive. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, it looks maybe, uh, well, not, th not that simple uh, as the previous two, but it shows all the power that FME adds to Mapnik. Um, and maybe it's not that scary if uh, I would tell that this part is uh, where we make river flow. Yeah, let's river take a look at that. Yeah, and the rest is pretty simple, one, two transformers for everything. It's actually not as complicated as yeah. I thought so, it might be. Um, so here is this, this transformer, uh, stream order calculator, which defines that Strahler yes. order. Uh, and we supply the network of streams and the node <laughs> where everything uh, flows. Something to sneeze at. So this transformer adds an attribute called Strahler order, and it also can uh, make, that, make sure that the yes. river flows in the correct directions. So that's been an FME for many years, and you're just being clever to combine it with the map. Yes, method. so here I uh, chop every line into three pieces yeah. and count them. So zero, one, two. Okay. And here I calculate the width of uh -huh. the line. So uh, it is based on Strahler order divided by two and the number of this piece which I count So here. you're making them slowly get fatter as they move from yes. left to right. Yes, and they are not integers. Yes. So okay, it can change point. from, yeah, yeah, it's from 0, 07, 0, 09, uh, and so on. And that's how. 0, they, 05, 0, 07, that's 0, why 09. The sub -pixel alias yeah, yes, that's how it works. It, that's yeah. why you can pass your course. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. so now, can you show us the rule to render that, or is it going to cause us trouble? Uh, no, it shouldn't, because we have a lot of rules. And it's water flow edit. So. So this is the width calculated in attribute creator. And it's floating point. Yes. Very interesting. OK. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, maybe so the second thing is displacer. Yes, that's to stop those roads and railways from colliding. Yeah, yes. Here we send the, the railroads are bases, which we shouldn't touch, which should stay where they are. You and can't move the railway. Yeah, and we decided we move a little bit the roads. Well, yes. the, well, there is a good book called How to Lie with Maps. Okay. Well, every map is lying if you, well, yes. uh, yeah, your roads are definitely not much wider on, 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 on many maps than they actually are. And you want to tell us this densifier is basically adding more points so that basically if we have a very long span from A to B, it's going to interpolate a bunch of points along that road and make it have more vertices so that the displacer yes, can do a displacer, better job. Yeah, displacer should know, well, should know, uh, well, it works with vertices. Right. It cannot work with uh, lines. And see, lines. if people don't know, uh, down in the help window, there's a thing that uh, tells us more more stories about what each of these transformers do. So that's the displacer. Probably most people never heard of the displacer. You know, I didn't even know it was there till this demo. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, and uh, here uh, I use, uh, I read yes. a DM raster and make hill shading to use as a nice raster background. And this is probably it. Well, maybe here I recalculate feet elevations to meters. This is a strange map where we have contours in feet and meters and elevations in feet and meters. I don't change the contours, but I change the elevations so that they all are in meters. So that's probably that's, the map made, well, years and years ago, and well, uh, some parts of it were updated when Canada, it's like Canada became metric. metric. Yeah, this map is equivalent to me. I had half my education in metric and half in imperial, so I'm really good at nothing. <laughs> so uh, that's good. And so this one here, you're all putting it as a single raster. Yeah, um, well, here inside, uh, maybe I can show that I use uh, 
compositing operation multiply, oh. which which shows really nicely the background underneath this layer, the the the, the rust, the hill shading raster, and the rest is very simple. I just set everything from attributes or directly in here. Yes. So that's how that's how this is done. Again, we'll supply this. Um, we we can also show. Maybe yeah. we should show the output. Right in this picture viewer, it's it's a pretty big image. Um, and in a moment, uh, we'll also flip open a couple of other examples. Okay, so oh, there it is. Right. So here it is. Yeah. And uh, again, the hill shading being used yeah. to. With that multiply effect, is that's what's giving you this nice. Uh, yes, and I think it lines up nicely with, with with contours. Yeah, I mean this data came from all over the place to begin with, uh, so it's uh, it's nice to know that the Canadian maps are telling the truth. Yeah, they're not lying, Dimitri. <laughs> so yeah, uh, lots yeah. of rivers. Then we have two. Well, based on this workspace, I made uh, a few other workspaces. Go to hit demos there. Demos, then three and. Uh, here, I generalize this a little bit for a different scale by adding a uh, generalizer transformer yes. for rivers. And also, I calculate Schaller order. I can get, can, can get rid of uh, those that have Schaller order 1. Yes. It's not exactly how you should, should do it, but for, the, well, for the, this demo, it, it is good yeah. enough. Uh, and The tiling must be on the right-hand side. Uh, yes, and this is basically it. I make just a few generalization operations, and here I very simply remove some of the elevations but with sampling. And here, this Let's is how we make yeah le how we make our tiles. So we make one great big image temporarily, and then yes. you must reproject it to the yes. Well, ideally, you would do reprojection uh, uh, the, on the vector data. Yes, but uh, well. Right. For, for the sake of this demo, it, it, it makes sense to show here. And then we send it to WebMap Tiler, which can make tiles for different yes. systems. Yes. You specify zoom levels and interpolation, and then you just write out lots and lots of PNG files. Right. And that's what people were looking at when we did those um, yes. a moment ago. Yes. Yes. Now, do you want to also open up the PDF output? Yeah, maybe I'll show uh, the workspace Somebody uh, again. The, the same, the same workspace, uh, and this little bit. A few right. transformers here, where I make from that big raster, I make smaller zoom rasters. In. We just zoom in a little bit. Right. Okay. There we go. Uh, then, if some rasters are empty because uh, it's not a rectangular yes, shape, yes. I just get rid of those. I sort them by name. And then I create a few attributes which define how these maps should be placed into a PDF. Yes. Uh, so on which page, uh, how the frame should look, the sizes of the frame on the page and the frame in the world. Yes. And after that, I simply write it to PDF. And here, a few transformers just to make some, some well, block uh, title block. Yes. Uh, Things. And then in here, when we give people the workspace, they can click on that and they could watch our webinar. The, yes, uh, yeah, PDF. yeah. We don't go into specific yeah. of making PDFs, so actually, but we can show the output. Should we look at the PDF? Yeah. So if I'm lucky, there it is. So multi page PDF with this map, tiled map. With the map NIC as the payload, basically. the. Yeah. So of course you can make the PDFs fancier. You could add more things to them. Yeah, uh, it's amazing what some of our customers have done. But now with the combination of Mapnik and PDF writing, uh, you could do amazing kinds of uh, yeah. renderings inside. Yeah, them. you can embed several maps on a single page. You have multiple pages, so everything is possible. Right. Okay. So um, should we head back to the uh, to our presentation? Yeah. So I think that we're doing pretty well here. And let's take a look. Yeah, we, we'll, uh, there's a bunch of links. I sent some of this also uh, to many of you uh, last night uh, if you wanted to look. But yeah, you can take a look at these documentation items. Again, a lot of the, the documentation on MapNIC itself is best found by studying both the tile mill and MapNIC documentation. <laughs> and uh, that's where we'd send you. And so lastly, we were just curious to ask you a question about where you might send your your um, results. 
So like when you actually end up using MapNIC to make rasters, what do you think you're going to do with it? Will you put in a PDF, chop it for <coughs> map tiles, enter our contest to become the ultimate MapNIC master? Um, let's see. Who's the judge for that contest? Do you know? Uh, me? The Russian judge. <laughs> I really hope to be a, a judge there. <laughs> yes, I, I think you will. And, and Dimitri's not afraid to fail people if their uh, streams, for example, aren't thicker at the base. <laughs> They'll be banned and be chucked right out. So, um, yeah, look at lots of people interested in PDF. And, of course, um, tiling, uh, web map tiling is, is the main thing. Um, let's just go ahead and close that poll. Okay, and you can all take a look at that. So um, you folks can, can decide, but really tiling, web map tiling is the main thing, and that's something we were thinking of adding right into that transformer yeah. it is, uh, is a way to tile it without doing a post-process. So that's something we'll look at. Anything yeah, else? we can use the same technique as we use for Vancouver streets. Yes. When you define all the rules, maybe even generalization rules within the spreadsheet, Yes. and you send your map to... Yes. Mapnik and everything is done automatically. So now, on our for our last demo, we are inviting you all to make your very own um, face map. So let's see what's going to happen here, Dimitri. Whoops, can I click on that? Maybe I can't. fme.ly slash face. So let's go and see what happens if I go there. Okay, fme.ly slash face. There it is. So I should probably see if in my finder, um, whoops, I should have had this ready, Dimitri. I think I got dale.jpg somewhere. Do you have one in the, um, in the demo data for this? Uh, I might. Well, let's look. We can, well, grade can... 12, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> let's quickly hide that. <laughs> so um, which one looks good? Maybe... Well, the, this one should be good. Try that one? Yeah. OK. So let's drag that Dale JPEG onto here. And folks, you could be doing this with your own thing right now. Uh, what other webinar gives you a chance to, to have a keepsake afterwards? So I drag it on. I say, select this file. Um, what's a good background? Well, uh, notebook is uh, like your secret admirer draw you during a lesson with, with, with just a si simple, what is this? It's, uh, <laughs> I don't think, is that my uh, picture? No, something is not quite right here. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. That also didn't take quite long enough, I don't think. So um, we'll see what happens if I drag. Whoops. Let's drag my uh, page, my face again. And uh, there we go. I'll select my file. OK. And we'll do notebook. It's thinking. It's a better chance this time. No, I'm always getting the same one. I don't think that's me. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, hopefully it worked for some of you, and uh, Stuart will figure out what happened to our demo. Yeah, well, yesterday it worked well. Yes. Uh, so anyway. Uh, uh, we can show maybe a few outputs uh, in the that folder. Wait, oh, is there some in that folder? Yeah. So, um, OK, so if we go here, and I look at our webinar that was in the demos, and it's in here. So um, outputs. OK, so why don't we do this? We'll go to cover flow and um, Actually, if I just even do this, so let's see, is it going to work? Yeah, there we go. So that's some of them. What's that one? That's that's still you, but there should be okay. a few other. Whoa, that's me. Oh wow. No, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, there's that's a nice. You. I'm out of the woods on this one. Uh, yeah. Oh, who's that? Your, your relative? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, an old ad. OK. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. And those are the backgrounds. And so um, I don't know why it wasn't working for us there. But Mike, maybe we can see in, in, uh, in the chat whether this works. Yeah. Did something. anybody else have it work? Um, let's see. If you've had it work, please chat and let us know. Otherwise, uh, in the chat, is there anything? Um, it works. It works for me and uh, Mark Ireland here. Okay, that's good. So I'm not sure what happened to me. Uh, maybe it's just set up so that a, Stuart must have changed it so if it's Dale going in, it does a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully it's worked for many of you out there. Um, let's see. We've got a couple of minutes left. 
what we'll do is after 9 o'clock, we'll walk through how that works. But we'll take questions in the last little bit. So Iris, uh, did anybody chime in with questions or is anybody raising their hand to talk to us? Well, we certainly had a lot of questions as we've been going. Uh, let's see if we've got any new ones. A lot of people saying enjoying the uh, rasterizer and yes. uh, sharing that it is working for them. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people are interested in the web tiling, so um, that was a common thing, solutions for uh, pyramiding rasters for, uh, for tiling things up. Definitely something a lot of people were asking about and uh, ways to do that with Mapnik. Yes, yeah. So that, that, that I know is a key thing and so that's why um, we'll continue to make examples for that workflow that, that make it simple to take the styling and then alter it without duplicating the whole workspace to generate different resolutions of tiles because that will be a common, a common use. Oh, so she wants me to flip to the Q&A slide. Let's see. Okay, yes, whoops. There, whoops. We, well, we missed a bunch of things. We can kind of talk about a few of them just before we end up. Anything else we should um, chat about for, with respect to the questions? I know that 100 people tried the, um, we can tell from our server stats hmm. um, that 100 people tried it, and many of them are very humble about how they look or don't look as expressed <laughs> as a contour. <laughs> but uh, I know your, your significant others will really, really uh, like that. So um, let's see. SRG says, can you rotate symbols? Is there a symbol? Is there a rotation on some of those things? Uh, we can have a look. I, I don't recall. Yeah, sure. that's but interesting. Somehow we definitely can. And you could, you definitely could swap backgrounds based on the um, bounds. There would be some logic in in FMB ahead of time, probably. Someone is asking about that. Yeah. Yes. And yes. someone's asking about map elements. So I suspect that's uh, legends and scale bars and those kind of things. Someone has raised their hand. So let me see, how do I, or can, Stephanie, can you put them on the air? Oh, maybe they've taken their hand down. If you raise your hand, we will uh, put you, oh, here we go, if I sort by this. Does anybody have their hand raised? Nope. If you do, you get a chance to be on the air. Let's see, what else can we... Uh, Should we uh, talk about the contest? Yes, while we're waiting for other questions, let's go back a little bit. So we are having a context contest. So uh, if you want to take what you saw today and the materials online, use your own data and send us. I like what Dimitri did. Whoa, in the background here is this, uh, what I call the hot tub map of Vancouver, <laughs> where you've got the water filled in and it's got kind of a Thomas the Tank uh, train engine. Whatever. Yes, yes. It's, yeah. <laughs> Look, but you can do that. And we promise to put you on the, the splash screen. So that's never been done before. And so... Um, that's something that we should do. Actually, um, as well, I should I should mention that if you are new to FME, we're having a free training session on May the 13th, um, which is interactive. We give you an Amazon machine, and you can um, try things yourself. And don't forget other things that are coming up. Of course, our user conference, um, how you can do this kind of stuff with FME server, and everybody's excited about the JSON webinar. I'm going to going to tune into that, mm -hmm. uh, where you can learn how you could integrate data from JSON. So let's see, Stephanie, is there anybody with their hand raised? Nope. And nobody has questions either. Cardo CSS. Yeah, people are asking that if we could um, allow these rules to be um, imported or used right from Cardo CSS and or Mapnik. And um, that's for people that already have tile mill. We could look at trying to do something like that. Um, it was hard to bring those two worlds together, uh, so that's why we did what we did. But, uh, but we recognize there's a chunk of people that have interesting maps already, so we, we definitely should look at that. Iris, any other questions before we um, sign out? Lots of people that say... So, so we have somebody who's asking, um, so uh, asking, can you create an, uh, an open street map of the world to 14 levels? So that seems like an ambitious project, but I don't know, is it doable? Do you think... Uh, uh, with the FMI server, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd want to... Well, it's, 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 I once calculated how much time it would take on a single machine, it would hundreds of days. Yes. But yeah. if you combine the power of several engines, then it's probably... Sure, you get an FMI cloud instance. So 14 levels is not that bad. Yes. Yeah. And you do a cloud instance and you... I think Stuart would know, but I think the top cloud instance can have 64 engines going in parallel. 
So a um, couple of those cloud instances, and uh, you suddenly can get a lot done. Yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, somebody shared their, um, let's take a look at somebody's output. So let's copy this, and then we'll look at Elmer, who has, uh, actually, this is a little dangerous, because uh, I don't know what kind of image. <laughs> Are we on a tape delay, Stephanie? So if there's something bad happens here, um, let's take a look. Oh, there you go. Hey, wow. I, that is fantastic. So thanks so much, Elmer. And I think that's what a fitting way to end our uh, regular broadcast. Thanks so much for tuning in.